Hello, my name is Enrique Arellano, and I'm the publisher at uh, the Editorial El Efteria in Barcelona, Spain, and organizer at Four Cycles Institute. And today we have the honor to have with us Daniel Hill. And Daniel Hill, PhD, is a psychologist and a psychoanalyst, a master teacher and a leading proponent of the affect regulation model. He's the author of Affect Regulation Theory, a clinical model, published by Norton in the United States, published by Editorial Elefteria in Spain, and by Raffaello Cortina in Italy. His publications and presentations include topics ranging from the clinical use of multiple models to religious fundamentalism understood through the lens of affect regulation. He was the founder and director of PsyBC and the Center for the Study of Affect Regulation from 1996 to 2017 that were online learning centers. So he was a pioneer in this and held conferences on affect regulation theory in New York City for the past 15 years. Dr. Hill has conducted ongoing study groups focused on an in-depth understanding of the regulation of affect. He's in private practice in New York City, where he's on the faculties of the National Institute of the Psychotherapies and the New York University postdoctoral program in psychoanalysis and psychotherapy. So welcome, Daniel Hill. Nice Let's to be present. Here. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for Let's having me. Let's present uh, uh, to everybody here uh, uh, the, the seminar that we have prepared for them. So what brought you to create or to put together the affect regulation theory? Um, well, I, I, uh, one, let me be a, um, a little bit more modest than you. I, I, I did not put this theory together, actually. I sort of came across this theory that actually Alan Shore had put together. Uh, and I've been working with him to uh, deepen it uh, and to, um, uh, in my case also, to provide a, um, uh, a, a place where this theory can be learned. Um, uh, so, but in terms of what, what, uh, what got me to that point, um, was that I had been actually uh, uh, earlier in my career, my focus had been on trying to uh, integrate the various uh, models of psychoanalysis into one, um, into one model. Um, and um, that had proved to be an extremely, uh, I was not alone in that effort, but that had proved to be an extremely difficult uh, task um, partly because uh, each of the schools um, had a different uh, point of departure. Um, the uh, um, theory of uh, classical psychoanalysis uh, 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 gave primacy to the drives. Uh, then um, ego psychology gave primacy to the ego. Um, uh, object relations gave primacy to the object. Self psychology gave primacy to the self. Uh, relational psychoanalysis uh, gave primacy to intersubjectivity. And um, it was very hard to, uh, uh, when you have those different starting places to integrate these theory, because each one sort of reduces uh, mental life down to this first, uh, to, to, this, uh, um, to whatever they give primacy to, the self or drives away. And um, um, uh, so there I am sort of out there trying to do that. And I come across the work of Alan Shore and I realized that I had really been going about this in the wrong way. That actually he had accomplished this, but not by directly trying to integrate the schools, but by integrating uh, sort of adjacent disciplines and by that, I mean disciplines at the level of uh, psychoanalysis, um, affective neurobiology, uh, attachment theory, uh, trauma theory, um, 
are the most prominent uh, disciplines that, uh, that he synthesized. Um, and out of it came a model that was um, really what I'd been looking for, uh, which was one that um, somehow uh, integrated all these different schools of psychoanalytic thought. Uh, the difference with affect regulation uh, is that it gave primacy to affects, uh, as you might, might imagine, um, and that uh, to affect and its regulation and uh, that uh, uh, changed everything. Uh, I realized that I could explain all the other models in terms of affect and, uh, and its regulation. So anyway, that's what inspired me. It was a uh, sort of a, the answer to a, uh, a dream I'd had my entire professional life. So on one side, you, we have been, uh, we're thankful to you because you created this elaboration of the affect regulation theory that it's accessible for many clinicians. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. So uh, out of this book and, and out of very concise lessons that we are offering this online course to clinicians all over the world in three languages. So thank you for this. Could we speak a little bit more about the, the developmental side of your model? Well, uh, it, it is a uh, uh, profoundly uh, developmental model. Um, and what, um, in, in some ways, the, the, re the real revolution here was the integration of two developmental theories. One of them was attachment theory. And the other was developmental affective neurobiology. And what that married was these behavioral and cognitive um, developments that occurred um, in, uh, in the early attachment relationship. And then what Shore did in his um, understand in this integration, he calls this integration modern attachment theory, is he realized that at the same time that those developments were taking place, there were, the, the, there were these profound uh, developments taking place in the brain, uh, in, the, in the centers of the brain that process emotion. And um, um, once you realize that, you realize that, well, actually what the attachment relationship is ultimately doing is keeping the infant in regulated states, in states where their affect is regulated and where they can function optimally. And uh, we're all where that where the, the maximizes their their adaptive potential. Uh, so, um, uh, and out of that developmental theory came a theory of uh, um, uh, pathogenesis, what goes wrong with development, and also a theory of therapeutic action. They they both originate in the developmental theory. So. And in your years that you've been teaching this in the postdoctoral program in New York City, uh, what do you believe the students of affect regulation theory model uh, have benefited from? How, how, what have you seen in your students? Hmm. Is, um, it, it, it changes the way you think. There is the way you think clinically. Uh, um, there is a focus on emotion and on uh, whether the um, emotion uh, is uh, a hyper aroused emotion or a high, like like uh, anger or fear or a hypo aroused emotion like uh, sadness or disgust. Um, and um, it also, so it's focused on whether the uh, affect is hyper or hypo aroused. And it also is concerned with whether the affect is regulated or dysregulated. And um, uh, the early attachment relationship is really uh, one in which the um, caretaker um, is uh, keeping the infant in regulated states. And that that, two-person process that's going on between the caretaker and the infant where the caretaker is 
regulating the infant, um, keeping the infant in positive states, um, is internalized by the infant. This two-person process becomes a one-person process. And that's the way we automatically, once those things are entrained, that's the way we automatically keep ourselves in regulated states. And our ability to process emotion and keep ourselves in regulated states determines whether or not we can develop. Uh, development is a stressful process and we have to be able to uh, regulate the stress uh, negative affect, basically. We have to be able to regulate the stress to allow us to be able to think uh, and change uh, in adaptive ways. Uh, so uh, uh, it, 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 when, you, when you sort of learn this model, you start to think in terms like that. everything boils down to staying in regulated states. And uh, those of us who are thriving in life have a greater capacity to do that than those of us who are struggling with life. Mm -hmm. And that those of us who have uh, uh, developmental arrests, uh, like narcissistic personality disorders or borderline personality disorders, um, are those who have difficulty regulating affect, which has really hindered their development. Uh, and those of us uh, who have discrete uh, psychopathologies like depression or anxiety disorders, those are basically affective disorders. Those are basically disorders where in the case of depression, you can't regulate down regulation. You can't keep yourself in a regulated state. Once you get down regulated, you can't come back into a regulated state. And anxiety states are ones in which when you become hyper aroused, you can't come back down into a regulated state where you can again process whatever the thing is that's making you anxious in some kind of an adaptive way. Yes. Long-winded explanation. But, no, yeah. it's really, really good. And I really want to profit from this occasion to tell everybody who's watching this video to really take the chance to go through all of the lessons, through all of the materials, because they are very rich learn learning. And it goes also in alignment with Stephen Porges' work of, uh, of, uh, of um, polyvagal theory, which posits similar similar levels of co-regulation, uh, uh, you know, from neuroception hierarchy and co-regulation. So it, it goes almost hand in hand in, in many ways. It complete, completely, uh, um, uh, this model is uh, focused on developmentally in terms of uh, optimal development, is focused on the um, shaping of what he calls the uh, 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 ventral vagal system or the smart um, affect regulating system. Exactly, exactly. So we are now coming to this point in psychotherapy practice all around the globe to, to understanding and valuing the, the intrinsic and the implicit presence of the therapist in the context of the relationship with their clients and how therapists can become themselves um, attachment repair objects for clients. And this, is, this model is not also useful, not only useful for therapists, but also for educators or for parents, you know, or anybody who's interested in, in the value of using relationship to regulate themselves and help regulate others as we are together in this quest for safety and for security and for emotional balance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 uh, one of the things that is happening now is this model is now being applied to uh, parent counseling, uh, uh, to uh, managing classrooms, uh, to uh, group therapy, to couple therapy. Um, it's really starting to infiltrate the psychodynamic, psychotherapeutic world, and hopefully uh, to the larger society as well. Yes, yes. I, I remember an interview with Stephen Porges where he was also asked a similar question and he responded that the narrative of the political messages needed to be focused in this direction of bringing ventral vagal uh, core regulation for people. 
and then things would grow in a different way. Yeah. So yeah. So I really appreciate your hard work and all all your presentations, and I really encourage everybody to to go through the course, practice what 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 you are being offered, uh, and let us know how you like it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.